Hello everyone, welcome to Minimal Mindful Mama. I'm Katie Mixon, and as you can see, today I have a special guest, my husband, Josh. What? Today is actually our anniversary. We've been married for eight years, and so we thought it'd be fun to do a video where we talk about our wedding. So eight years ago, we hadn't even heard of minimalism yet, but we were young and on a budget, and so we ended up throwing ourselves what could be considered a pretty minimalist wedding. And so we wanted to share with you all of our tips and tricks and what we did and how we did it, and what we would do differently if we were doing it again. We have our trusty wedding photo album here to help jog our memories since eight years ago is a very long time. Yes. And I'll be popping the pictures up on the screen for you as well. And yeah. Uh -oh. Cheers to eight years. <laughs> <laughs> category that probably is the largest spending category for most couples is the venue. We were actually able to have our wedding at our church for free. They were very kind in letting us use the building and we wanted to have an outdoor wedding. So trying to find an outdoor venue was looking pretty difficult. So we ended up using just a patch of grass field with trees in the background that was back behind the side of the church. <laughs> so we didn't really like how the side of the church looked. So the idea that I came up with when we were trying to figure out where the ceremony would be is I uh, wanted to create a semicircle of curtains that would actually block the view of the back of the church, which wasn't exactly very appealing. All of the chairs were placed in a circle around the ceremony, and half of that was backed by these curtains that we rented. And that helped block the parking lot too. Yeah. So if we had to do that again, the curtains kind of costed quite a bit to rent. And I liked how it ended out, especially because that's where we had decided where we were going to have our ceremony. So we kind of had to deal with it at the time. So if we had to do it again, I think that I would just choose a completely different wedding ceremony location. Um, now I actually really like when I see wedding ceremonies that are on the beach. Uh, I think that at the time it was April, you know, today, eight years ago, and it was a lot warmer at the time. So we could have easily had the wedding out on the beach, which would have been almost free, depending on where you're located. So it would have just been the cost of figuring out some kind of a trellis or something so that you can get married underneath of and chairs. We didn't know that what the weather was gonna be so nice though, so it would have been a gamble. That's true. So having a backup would have been necessary how much did the curtains cost when you rented them? Oof. <laughs> You're asking me to remember something from eight years ago? Mm -hmm. I think that it was close to like 400, maybe more. So it wasn't exactly very cheap. Um, so one of the more expensive things that we spent money on, uh, which is again, not really one of the reasons exactly why I would choose a different location because I really like the idea of a beach wedding or maybe a wedding in a cool area in the woods where there's a, a meadow. If we could have found a meadow or open space in the woods that were surrounded by trees that we could have put chairs or even just have people stand, that would have been a really cool way to do a ceremony. It would have been virtually costless because you're not renting chairs, you're not worried about, you know, any of the fees from a facility, it's just in the woods somewhere. Um, I remember your parents asking me where I wanted to get married and saying, uh, like a field on the side of the road somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely something a little bit of step up from on the side of the road somewhere, <laughs> but I think that we could have taken the time to find some place, um, almost anywhere 
Like, I can't think I of many... The state park would have been nice. But... Yeah, the state park, because we went there quite a bit, so... So then it would have just been the cost of the officiant that we had. And we did have someone actually last minute, since the chair situation wasn't working out, they rented chairs for us to use that we set up in the grass. So that was another expense, but not something that we personally paid for as it was a gift, so. Yeah. And that was really huge for us because uh, we didn't realize at the time that the church wasn't going to be letting us use chairs outside. Uh, they had indoor chairs and then they had some chairs that looked like they... Like folding chairs. That they could be used outdoors and we were just totally surprised last minute. And when I say last minute, I mean two days before the wedding, the church tells us, oh, you can't use those chairs outside. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those wedding details where you don't really think about chairs very much. We thought we had everything figured out. And then suddenly the venue is like, oh, you can't do that. Um, Let's talk about what we did for the reception. So it was still at the same church, just indoors. They let us use the sanctuary um, that was... we basically moved all of the chairs to the side and put Christmas lights over everything. Yeah, so when I proposed, I used Christmas lights and put them all over a gazebo. Like, I lit that thing up, like... <laughs> so we put Christmas lights all over the sanctuary um, just to give a really cool effect because it was relatively dark in there. We were able to dim the lights a lot because we had those lights. Yeah, and it created a really cool and intimate effect, so we really liked that. Um, one of the big things that we realized when that was happening is that we needed some place to dance because this church had all carpeted floors. Like, none of the rooms were not carpeted, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to use a sanctuary. Uh, they had those chairs that just got set out um, and they can be moved and whatnot. So we were able to just get those out of there. Um, and for the dance floor, uh, I came up with the idea of just building one. So how did you do that? Um, I just used a couple sheets of plywood uh, and me and my best men, uh, we just got together one night, I think it was the night before the wedding. The night before the <laughs> wedding, but everything was pre-planned. Uh, I already knew all of the materials that I wanted to use. So I got all of the plywood and <clears throat> put it, laid it out, you know, all together, the size of the dance floor. And then I got um, really cheap sheets of linoleum. And I used that linoleum to be on top of it, which is what we would actually dance on. And then we just cut along the outside of it. Uh, I've seen other people where they only use the linoleum. Uh, we actually went to a wedding where it was basically the linoleum that was on grass and it was very uneven and hard to dance on and it actually hurt our feet quite a bit um, at that wedding. Uh, so it was really great at our wedding that we had that plywood underneath that created that firm foundation for the dance floor so that we didn't have to worry about, you know, people hurting themselves while dancing. And how much did you spend on the materials for that, would you say? I think I spent less than 150 bucks for that, uh, which sounds like a bit for something that you're just going to get rid of afterwards, which I did end up donating the plywood, so that didn't go to waste. It was just a little linoleum that ended up getting trashed. Um, but when you compare that cost to the cost of renting a dance floor, it's way, way under what we would have paid for a similar size dance floor. Even one half the size, you'd be lucky to get it for 150 So the next probably big expense when wedding planning would be the attire. So the wedding dress and then what the guy wears. 
So we were only engaged for four months. So I had very little time to actually find a dress. And so I ended up having to purchase something off the rack and didn't really have a choice about that anyway. So I went to a few bridal boutiques and looked at the dresses that they had and they didn't really have much at all in my price range. And so they ended up having one dress that I tried on. It was the first one I tried on and I really liked it. It had a lot of the elements that I was looking for and I knew that I would be able to add some of the things that I wanted to it in alterations. So that dress cost $600. I paid $300 and then my mom ended up giving me the money for the rest of it and then the alterations were an additional $200. I bought a suit specifically for the wedding. Um... I don't remember exactly how much it costed. I just went to a tailor that had uh, the suit that I really liked when I was shopping around for it. So I just went in and had it tailored and got it. Yeah. You were on slightly less of a budget than I was. You had a job. <laughs> we were in a car accident right before we got engaged. And so I had broken my hand in the car accident and was unemployed at the time. So my savings were completely depleted and any money that I would have been able to budget for the wedding was just going towards paying my bills at the moment. So I definitely was on a really tight budget as far as the wedding went, but you thankfully still had your job and some savings. So we had a little bit of leeway there. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the decor. So there's a lot of different elements to the decor that we did. We kind of mentioned the Christmas lights and the curtains. Um, we also did, we, we bought little wooden hearts at the craft store and we spray painted them with chalkboard paint to make signs to direct people where to go. Um, we had one chalkboard sign that kind of like told the story of our relationship. It had like the dates of like when we first met and like our first date and when you proposed and when we said I love you, things like that. It was pretty cute. Um, so we made those and then we bought flower petals and I bought like the, so the colors of the wedding were pastels. Um, I was torn between that and something else, but we went with the pastel color theme. And so I bought pink, purple, and light blue rose petals. And we just mixed those three bags up and sprinkled them on the tables and used them a lot of different places. I also had a bunch of mason jars that I had already had. And so we put one on each table with a single red rose in it as the centerpiece. We also put mason jars tied to each of the chairs along the aisle and put some of our flowers in those going down the aisle towards the center where the ceremony was. We pretty much used flowers for a lot of our decor. For the flowers for the wedding, I actually ordered just a bunch of flowers off of, I think like 1-800-Flowers or um, Global Rose, I think is where I got them. So I ordered red roses and then just whatever inexpensive, affordable flowers they had that were light pink, yellow, light blue. And my bridesmaids and I put together all the bouquets and the boutonnieres and then we used those for the decor as well since we had lots of flowers and it kind of gave the wedding that like fairy tale kind of feel. Yeah, that with the flowers and then the Christmas lights that were kind of twinkling with the lighting a little bit darker made it very uh, fairy tale, like dreamy looking. Mm -hmm. We also were able to use the linens from the church. They had white tablecloths that we were able to borrow and then we just paid to have them dry cleaned afterwards. And you ended up renting the flatware and glasses and plates and stuff for the dinner, right? Yeah, the flatware and the glasses 
for the dinner was one of the other things that we spent some money on uh, simply because I had looked into alternatives to renting all of that and I ended up coming up with just throwaway plastic silverware that looks similar to silverware uh, and neither of us really wanted to do that because we're trying to be very sustainable so we're minimalistic and we're also working on being sustainable so would have been a lot of waste to buy all that plastic plasticware and then throw it away after the wedding we did have a we invited about 200 people maybe like 150 came since we did do a little bit of a bigger wedding, we wanted to include all of our family and friends and everyone. And so it, we did have a, a good sized wedding, I'd say. Yeah. So it would have been a lot of waste to do all that disposable dinnerware. Mm -hmm. And so you found a place, was it the same place that you got the curtains that rented the, the dinnerware? Yeah, it was the same place and that was another thing that was kind of interesting because it seemed like it was a lot cheaper for us to go direct to them, which seemed kind of unusual for them. I think that they mostly interface and work with wedding planners and or uh, venues. or venues or caterers. So for us to just ask to rent some of that wasn't really that big of a deal. Do you have any idea? Do you remember how much that cost to rent all that? I think it was 200 to rent that. Okay. So, <laughs> rather than hire caterers, I took it upon myself to cook chicken for 150 people by myself with mental help from the bridesmaids the day of. So I spent a hundred dollars on chicken. I made a simple recipe and I used the kitchen at the church and we cooked all that chicken and it turned out great. I also had a friend who enjoyed cooking and catering type things and she was very generous in that she provided all of the sides for the wedding. So I think we had carrots and mashed potatoes. I had originally wanted to make the cake myself, but a lot of people just thought that I was taking on too much myself and that it wouldn't be good to have to also make a cake like the day before or the day of the wedding. And so my mom did that for me. So, one of the differences between the way that we did our wedding and the way that somebody else you or somebody else might do their wedding is that katie is a pastry chef so she really enjoys making cakes and pastries and whatnot it would have been really fun but also challenging for her so i think that that's something that she could have done to help relax because there were a lot of uh, stressors a lot of people have a lot of opinions about how you should do your wedding. <laughs> and when it comes down to it, like, I feel like we really cared at the time. But as we've matured, <laughs> I feel like we don't care as much. Like, it's our wedding. We can do what we want and people can just deal with it. <laughs> Yeah. And people were upset anyway. We tried to make everyone happy and there were still people who expressed disappointment over certain aspects or of different things that we should have done differently. So I think if we were doing it again, we would just do what we wanted and make ourselves happy and it's our wedding. So That's probably the biggest thing that I would change about wedding planning is I wouldn't totally ignore their advice because some people might have good advice and some of that can be good, really good to hear, especially if they're in the wedding industry, having advice from somebody uh, could be very valuable. At the same time, you have so many different people with different ideas about what the wedding should be like 
and some of that is maybe a little bit of baggage from their own experience and the way that they wish that theirs had been and they kind of project their feelings about the wedding onto your wedding. So while I think that you shouldn't completely ignore what other people have to say about your wedding, uh, take their advice, you know, you can thank them for sharing their thoughts. Uh, at the same time, it is your wedding. Uh, so if their advice works with your wedding, then great. And they can feel good because they helped you on your wedding day. So you can't make everyone happy, especially when everyone's expectations for you are conflicting. Yes. It's impossible. Uh, if your wedding planning and the budget is really tight and you have all of these people with these opinions, at the end of the day, you have a specific budget that you have to stick to and their opinions might not exactly fall within that budget. So it's really ultimately your decision and your responsibility to make sure that your wedding is inside of your budget. In the past, I've been to quite a few different weddings of various expense. And I have to say that the people who are getting married are generally happy regardless of the expense of the wedding. <laughs> so I don't necessarily think that if you spend a little bit more on something in the wedding that you're going to be happier for it. So let go of everybody else's expectations and make your own cake. <laughs> Another expense category for weddings is the rings. So I actually found Josh's ring. I think I paid $99 for it. I had something very specific in mind that I wanted. I wanted hammered tungsten and I wanted the edges to be finished like smooth. And so I ended up finding exactly what I wanted. I do not remember the website that I ordered it off of, but I mean, it's held up. It's pretty good so far, right? So <laughs> I have a personality where I value utility in most situations. Uh, there's some times where I really like style, um, but in a wedding ring, as long as it's styled well, I'm not worried about it having a diamond in it. Um, I don't really care how much it costed. I know that some people out there might see a ring and say like, oh, that just costs $100 and th they might make a big deal about it. But when we went to buy our rings, uh, when I bought her engagement ring and then we bought the wedding rings, um, I guess you just have to figure out what's important to you. For my personality, I don't need something super flashy and expensive. I just wanted something that was my style. And I think that when Katie was picking my ring, that she did manage to find something that I really like. I, I still like it to this day. I think it's great. And the fact that she was able to only spend $100 on it, and it's something that I still like, says not only a, a lot about Katie and how well she knew me back then, but also the fact that you don't have to spend a ton of money on a ring, at least for the guy. <laughs> I think that the wedding ring for Katie was a little bit different because the engagement ring was pretty nice and I wanted to make sure that the wedding ring matched it reasonably well specifically the color, it, it was white gold. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that the wedding ring wasn't going to look too different from the engagement ring. The place that I got the engagement ring uh, sells a wedding ring that matches it, but it's almost the exact cost of the engagement ring. And you had to send back the engagement ring in order for them to make the wedding ring to match it. So that was a little bit difficult to do since we were a long distance up until like the day of the wedding. Yeah. And since we were trying to save money 
at the time, we just figured that since she did have her nice engagement ring, and we really just wanted to save as much money as possible on the wedding, that having a matching but uh, not simple simple wedding ring was uh, probably for the best. Uh, we're gonna upgrade it someday. <laughs> Although I don't know if I want to because I like like the sentimental factor of having the ring that was the original wedding ring. So maybe like I've heard of people doing additional like anniversary rings, but I kind of like having my original wedding ring. Even back before we were getting married, uh, I had a very strong uh, opinion about things that are ethically sourced. And diamonds specifically have a massive history of a lot of issues. So the company was named Brilliant Earth. When I read about them, I was just really excited uh, because they were exactly what I was looking for as far as who to buy the wedding ring from. It was just really great because they had amazing looking rings and other jewelry, but the important part is they're all ethically sourced. Another big expense usually at weddings is the DJ and the photographer. So Josh's dad actually worked for years and years in the wedding industry. And so he had a few connections and was able to get us a photographer friend as well as, did he DJ the wedding or did he have someone else come? I don't remember, but either way we didn't, personally pay for the DJ or the photographer. So that was a huge relief to our wedding budget. If we were to do it again, I definitely think that we would invest in a better photographer. And I also think that a videographer is essential. <laughs> That's one of the things I would definitely do differently. I would love to have a video of our wedding. So for our invitations, we actually made them ourselves. We did them as postcards. And so one side of the postcard was a picture of us. And then on the other side where the address and the stamp and everything were, Josh actually designed that. So that was really cool. Uh, while we were engaged, we were dating long distance, or we were engaged to long distance. I don't know how you say that, but we were. <laughs> Katie had- Not fun. Do not recommend. <laughs> no, do not. Katie had sent me a page that she had kind of doodled in school. She had been going to college um, and in class at some point, she had been doodling hearts uh, on a page, I guess she was maybe a little bit bored in class. <laughs> uh, so she ended up doodling an entire page full of hearts and she sent it to me. And I thought it was really cool and it meant a lot to me. Uh, so later while we were planning the wedding and everything and trying to get things together, I had the idea to actually use that page with all of the hearts as the background for our wedding invitation. So on the one side, as Katie said, there was a picture of the two of us when we were getting engaged. And then on the other side, with all of the information and whatnot in the background behind that was all of the hearts on that page. That was really cool. They turned out nice. For hair and makeup, we just did our own hair, basically. I mean, you did yours, my bridesmaids helped me out with mine. Um, and then for makeup, we lived near a bare mineral store or bare essentials. I'm not sure um, what it was called at the time, but a lot of makeup stores will do a free like they'll give you a little mini makeover and so they actually did wedding makeup and it didn't cost us anything so we had gone to the store 
and like tested it out and seen that we liked it. And then we just made an appointment for the day of the wedding and went in that morning and they did my makeup and the bridesmaids makeup all for free. So that is a really good <laughs> budget friendly tip if you need wedding makeup done is to ask your local makeup stores if they'll do that. Finally, for our send off, we wanted to do something a little bit different. We'd seen people throw rice and have bubbles and we'd seen sparklers and we wanted to do sparklers but we weren't legally allowed to have them. So that was really a disappointment. So we came up with another rather unusual idea instead. I forget who exactly came up with the idea. Probably me. <laughs> So we ordered a bunch of Pop Rocks and put them in little individual, you know, like the little chiffon wedding favor baggies. And we put about five in each one and we handed them out to all the guests at the end of the wedding for the send off. So to recap, if we were to do it again, what we would definitely recommend investing more in or the things that we would do differently I would want to try on more dresses before I made my final decision. Um, I wish that I had done that. I really liked my dress at the time, but I liked it compared to the other two dresses in the store that were in my budget. And so I think that if I had looked more, I might have found something else that I liked better. And I do feel like because I know a lot of people don't keep their dress or it's not really that big of a deal or they'll do like a trash the dress thing, but I actually still have mine and I put it on every year on our anniversary. And so to me, like, since I'm gonna wear it every year and we dance together in it, like that is something that I wish I had invested more in. And then, yeah, the videographer, get a wedding videographer. It's a wedding essential. I definitely remember quite a few things happening at the wedding and even the time before, like during the setup and whatnot, there was just so much stuff going on and so many funny things happening. I think that it could have been just invaluable to have a videographer. I really liked our flowers. I think that that turned out awesome. I really liked our decor. Uh, everyone said the food was great. So those are all things that I feel like we did really well. Um, but there's just, you know, a few things that are more for us that we would have for years to remember by, such as like the photography or having a wedding video to watch things like that, that I do think you're investing in more for yourself and for the future than necessarily for the guests on the day of. And I feel like we were more focused on the guests on the day of than things that we would want to have down the road. I also have been to some weddings since where they had like a friend of the couple officiate and I have absolutely loved those weddings. We had our pastor do it just because he was available and <laughs> affordable, but I think it's so special when you have a friend who like, instead of doing like the official readings or whatever, like talks about you as a couple. And I think that that's more fun for the guests and more our personal style and I think that I would do that differently as well. At the time, neither of us really considered not having a pastor officiate our wedding. Uh, that's one of the things that I think that we could change and not really be sad about. Not because we don't want a pastor to officiate the wedding, but because that would have allowed us to have a little bit more freedom in being able to choose to do different things during the wedding ceremony. Katie and I have done a little bit of reading since then, and this is years later, but we found that weddings never used to be officiated by a priest or a pastor. 
Uh, initially, they were actually just friends and family, and it was all about a celebration. And while there was a little bit of a ceremony, the focus of the wedding was the celebration because you're you're celebrating a union. I think for us and our personalities that we just like that more fun celebratory approach than being more the traditional personalities of wanting the very traditional ceremony. Yeah. So that is how we threw our minimalist wedding on a budget before we even knew about minimalism. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday and we will see you or I will see you in the next video. Oh, am I supposed to talk no, now? No, you're not supposed to talk now. <laughs> you just look, they, look, they look pretty. <laughs> um, we didn't last time. <laughs> we didn't plan it together last time. We kind of did. <laughs> I feel like we, like, we each planned elements of it and, like, the other one just kind of went along with certain elements. Oh, okay. I don't think anybody's ever lit up a gazebo the way that I lit that one up. How much did you spend on Christmas lunch for the proposal? <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of this video. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Was there broccoli too? I can't remember. <laughs> Let's check if there's a picture of it. There were a few sides. I know there was mashed potatoes and I know there was carrots and the chicken. I don't think that we need to get specific on the sides. <laughs> it's important though. <laughs> <laughs> that everybody got to, you know, have fun with throwing rocks on the ground and making noises. So <laughs> similar to entertaining children. Yes. <laughs> what you do with all of your relatives. Yeah. <laughs> Give them pop rocks. And I can't stop listening I'm thinking about him all the time I'm thinking about him all the time I'm thinking about him all the time All the time And my heart's beating fast when it's looking like that Oh, his smile is killing me It's the way that it moves and the way that it laughs So I can't get enough I'm thinking about him all the time